The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, this is Ken Gage, and this is the Art of Politics, the only show of its type. Of course, I am the, you know, the, the Democrat, and, I, and I, I'm the good guy, and of course my partner over here is the Republican, conservative, and I'm the liberal, uh, Bill O'Brien. How are you? I'm doing well today. How are you, Ken? I'm doing very well. Yeah, can we have the honor of having the Honorable Rip Holden uh, here with us today? You know, when I joined uh, the legislature um, gee, about 10 years ago, Rip was already a senior member of the legislature. And Rip, thanks Bill, for coming. what do I owe you? Because with an introduction <clears throat> like that, I'm going to owe you something. Um, you, you do. And so we're going to have a right to work vote coming up. Uh, but before <laughs> we begin that, you know, every, you know, my that, mom. That was quick. I have to, I have to <laughs> tell you You might get that one out of the way. Yeah, right. No, but wait, know, before, before, before we go I there, I do you. have to say, um, my mom always taught me that whenever I go anywhere, always to bring a, a gift. Again? So I did, <clears throat> and I'd like to give you this, oh. and I know you're going to put this on. It's a little Teamster pin, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, here, let me put right. that on for you. No, no, no you, 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 I don't. You, you, know, you know what? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to hold this as something you know, that I, I, I don't know even, that you're I don't, a hospitable I don't even, I don't even want to tarnish it with you it know? being close to I even it. gave Neil Kirk one. Uh, and did he put it on? Yes, he did. Okay, we're going to primary Neil. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you very much, the two of you, for having me on. It's a pleasure. Well, I think we, there's a little explanation that, that's, that's needed. But first, how I, I met Rip is we were in commerce together the first uh, two years. Yep, in commerce committee. He sat right next to me. Yep. And uh, that's how we got involved with FRM because we were on the House Commerce Senate and that's where Maggie, now yep. governor, was, was the head. So we caused a lot of trouble. We really <laughs> caused a lot of trouble. We made a lot of people uncomfortable. <clears throat> For a long time. So that's how I, how I met Rip. But Rip now is a lobbyist, and he is a lobbyist, and you are lobbying with the well, union. I, I represent the, the Teamsters. I also represent uh, the FRM victims. I've only been doing this for a couple of years, uh, as Bill yeah, well, said. Why don't you give us a little bit of your background, yeah. how long you were in the legislature, and well, yeah. you did become a lobbyist. And by the way, one of the things I want people to understand, and I really do believe this, uh, that lobbying is an honorable profession. You represent, you represent constituents mm -hmm. um, up at the legislature or with government, and, and you um, allow us to more effectively do our job by providing information and uh, representation. Do we always agree? You know, not always, no. but but uh, certainly it is it is profession that you know people hear lobbyists and this sort of well, a they negative. They think of Washington. Yeah, and they think of a negative uh, connotation. Well, certainly in New Hampshire that doesn't exist. I would like no. to add a little to that. Uh, you're absolutely right, especially when you said Washington, because here in New Hampshire we really get nothing. We can't take anything from a lobbyist. Up to twenty-five dollars, maybe a meal or something, but that's it. So lobbying up here is a little bit different, usually. So you're correct. Yeah, without we, staff, we, we do depend on those folks who are representing our neighbors, our constituents, yeah. to bring in information. And you know, obviously, we understand there's representation going on, but there's nothing wrong with that. So no. give us a little bit of your background. Well, <clears throat> first of all, I got elected to the House um, back in 2000. I was an unknown. I was from Golf Sound. I represented at that time just Golf Sound. There were five of us. And I was first time running, and actually my second time running. I ran in 98. I actually won, to everybody's amazement. And then there was a recount, and the Democrat beat me by two votes. And, uh, you know, I said, okay, well, you know, you lose gracefully. So you gracefully. are a Republican. I am a Republican. Right, okay. uh, <clears throat> I ran again. I got in in 2000, and I was there representing the people of Goffstown for two years. And then they, with redistricting, we had... The town of Ware, uh, which incidentally is named from Mishawk Ware, who is a direct ancestor of mine. So I consider myself Mr. Ware officially, unbeknownst to Representative Kirk, who considers himself Mr. Ware. Well, let me ask you if I can just interrupt you. So, so your family has been in um, Gosstown Ware area since the towns were named? No, actually, my family founded Nantucket, Mishawk Ware, uh, Grand Nantucket. My, his, fam uh, <laughs> my family helped you know, <laughs> cut the road to Hudson. Yeah. yeah. He's got yeah. Nantucket. My but, family made a quick getaway from Ireland. <laughs> yeah, well, we all have our peccadilloes. 
But uh, no, I've only lived, I lived in Goffstown since 79. And uh, as I say, I was lucky, lucky enough to represent Goffstown anywhere for about 10 years. Um, five terms. Five terms, correct. And then I, um, you know, followed my heart, moved up to Maine, and like any good, brilliant person, got an offer back in New Hampshire, <laughs> lobbying. That happens. I actually called a constituent to wish him a Merry Christmas. And because of the, um, the outlay of the politics of the time, it was uh, three years ago, and you became speaker, he said, hey, we need a a Republican to help us out. Can you help us out? And I said, sure. So um, I started doing lobbying. And one of the things, when you talked about lobbyists, I will say, a good lobbyist will never break his word. And you know as well as I do, that's all you have in Concord. Because once I give you bad information without telling you first that, oh, this is bad, don't pay attention to it, you're never going to trust me. And we may yeah. not agree, but at least we're going to have respect. And we may agree on something. It may not be right to work, but it's going to be something. Well, and I think that's what a lot of uh, folks who have gone through more than a term or two begin to realize that, you know, even across the aisle, there's many things that we will agree on over time, and many times that we have to work with each other to get legislation passed. You know, one, one of the pieces of legislation, for example, that Ken worked on this time was the uh, cooperation uh, law. Corporation mm -hmm. laws, yeah. And, and um, you know, that's something that just in the end it wasn't a Republican. It wasn't or a Democrat. Republican or Democrat. It was, it was just, you know, uh, an updating of the law, confidence. And, and uh, that's right. I'm sure Ken reached out to a lot of Republicans. I'm Absolutely. Sure a lot of Republicans reached out to Ken on Absolutely. On that issue. It was very, very I important. I will say this one of my proudest things is that I never had a partisan bill. Well, that's not true. I did have one partisan bill, and that was a bill I was the only sponsor. So I guess it is partisan. But all the rest of my bills. <clears throat> were two things. They were bipartisan, and they never had a fiscal note, meaning that there was never any money for the taxpayers involved in it. Right, right. You know, in 10 years. I had a few um, partisan bills on my own. I, I, yeah, I can't believe that. Come on, who are you trying yeah, to Yeah, I would like to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, partisan means both Republican and Democrat get together, and, and please, right, he's got to work with them. You know, um, so. one of the things that people should understand <clears throat> is that we are elected based upon our, the articulation of a certain philosophy of government, and that we have to take that with us to do whatever elected position we are in. And, 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 and so that becomes or looks the partisan, and that's, that's good because, uh, in essence, you know, we listen to um, arguments from the left, and we listen to um, those... Uh, liberty, right. the, the liberty arguments, and then yeah. we get we get a, a better system out of it. But don't you have to represent wait, wait, everybody? Wait, wait, wait a minute. He because says you're left saying and left and liberty. Right and left. Well, you know, it, 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 uh, obviously, obviously, we represent ideas. You know, if 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 in fact, um, in saying you represent everyone, if someone comes to me and and or you for that yeah. matter, you there and say, you know, I just don't, you know, I, I want some sort of a a wrong law put in place, a racist law yeah. or something yeah. like that. We're just not going to do it. Yeah. And, and, no. and so, for example, in my case, if someone were to come to me and say, you know, I'm, I'm really looking for a very active social program, and, and I would sit and talk to them and say, I'm, I'm probably not your guy for that. You want to talk to Ken Gidge. Yeah, you want to talk to Ken Gidge because he's a big government guy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. You know, that didn't, a, that didn't occur to me. That didn't, that didn't, didn't, that didn't occur to me, Rip, but I, I, I appreciate you pointing that out. I, I mean, well, I have a, a teacher's bill, a teacher's protection bill that I hope that you will sign on to, and that's both uh, uh, unions, it's also teachers, and also the administration. I think there's actually been pretty good support in both parties yes. for that. There's a recognition that... Um, that kind of legislation is necessary. Well, we've tried it. We, we've got it so far, but this time I'm going to make sure with the right people, uh, hopefully yourself and a lot of other people, let's, let's get the teachers so if they break up a fight, they're not going to worry that they're going to be sued. Yeah. Right. Some common sense. Yeah, it is common sense legislation. You know, so, so since we're common, everybody would have it. Yeah, and, and you know, it's one of those bills that I think everybody says, yes, of course we should have, and then you start looking at the language and saying, does it go too far here, or what does it mean there? Absolutely. And, and so you have to do it carefully, but, but in its essence and its core, I think everybody agrees. Oh, it, are you, I can't, cannot believe the, the great problem, and I have no idea why. It's the 
disabled families have come and have fought against it. And I've said, you know, if your, your child is being harmed by a bully, <clears throat> don't you want the teacher to be able to stand in and sort of push Well, normally a teacher away? wouldn't do that. They, they would have their own para, um, uh, I forget the term, but their own specific uh, oh, one on one aid. One on one aid. Yeah. That would be able to do that. If but but a, there's times. I mean, and I can understand both sides of it. I haven't been on a school board. There are certainly times where a youngster um, acts out, and the parents would be somewhat concerned that the child be treated gently, even though he might be, you know, kind of active mm -hmm. physically or what could be construed as violence. On the other hand, you know, teachers don't go to um, work to be harmed, and we shouldn't. Um, Put them in a position where they are harmed, um, and the, or, or sued because they're exactly. yeah. dealing I mean, with a. Well, when I was in school, if I didn't do what yeah, I was told, yeah. I got right. slapped upside the, the, the head. The worst, the worst thing that could happen was we'll call you parents. Father. Yeah, we'll call you father. Oh, yeah. well, anyway. So anyway, it's funny that we're talking about this and that we're still a little back and forth about it. So it is more a little more complicated. But when right. a teacher mm -hmm. is told not to do anything but to go get another teacher while somebody is being beaten up. That's, that's wrong, because they're afraid of getting, afraid of getting So there's a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so let's say you're returning, and you're, you're representing the Teamsters, <coughs> and tell yeah. me about this other group that you're representing. Well, it's the victims from the uh, FRM Ponzi scheme okay. that occurred um, um, in 2006, 7, um, have they formed an association or just... Well, they have a, a group of um, uh, individuals mm -hmm. who uh, got together. And, um, you know, having, as Ken said, I was on the, the joint committee to study the FRM Ponzi scheme and where the state had uh, made some mistakes. Right. Um, and everybody went to the immediate assumption that these were investors. You know, because most people think, oh, well, they've lost their money, they invested it. It was a Ponzi scheme. What people don't know is they actually had secured notes, mortgages. And because the state was um, in a rush when this all collapsed, they immediately pushed them into bankruptcy. And the bankruptcy trustee said, okay, I want all the assets. So some of the victims, not only did they lose their money, the lenders actually got sued by the trustee, so they lost their, their collateral. So, so the lenders are, are some of the folks you're representing now? Yes, those are specifically and, and the so people. So they lost their secured a, status they lost their as secure a result of an allegation that they participated in the scheme? No, they, they, they lost this the, because it was in went into bankruptcy. The bankruptcy trustee said to them, okay, look, we're gonna form one pot and we are going to take everybody's assets. And if you don't agree with that, then we're gonna to have to bring you to court. Okay, um, so, because the security is, a secured asset is honored in bankruptcy court. In other words, it's a hierarchy of creditors mm -hmm. and for any bankrupt, the highest level you can occupy um, short of administrative costs. Administrative costs, once you go bankrupt, mm -hmm. the cost of running the bankrupt uh, operation. Um, but right under that are secured creditors. Mm -hmm. And w how did they lose their status as secured creditors? Um, I'll be honest with you, and um, this is part of the things where the victims actually are very helpful. Right. And um, having lived this, right. they can explain that much better. But in essence, um, long and short of everything is their, their collateral was basically taken from them um, because that's what the bankruptcy trustee demanded. And, and for people who do not understand, when we talk about a Ponzi scheme, we're talking about a company that really stole $30 million from investors or lenders here in the uh, state of New Hampshire. And as well as all over the country. All over the country. And from that were several suicides that yep. you know of? Um, bankruptcies? Actually, oh, many, many bankruptcies. Marriages breaking up? I, um, actually, one of the people who uh, you know, Mr. Um, McAvee, yep. is just had um, heart surgery. I didn't know so, that. <clears throat> um, I mean, this is very stressful. And you, 
you know, it's not like, unfortunately, there were so many mistakes um, by the government. These people actually went to the proper authorities and did the due diligence. Well, tell, explain, so explain how, what happened when they, who did they call first? What information did they get? Because that's, that's the... Okay. Well, part of them, they went to um, the banking industry or the banking department and called and spoke, said, are these guys reputable? Do they have a, uh, uh, any outstandings, any liens or anything of that nature? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and they were told, yeah, everything's fine. Everything is great. Meanwhile, there were injunctions put against them, uh, cease and desist orders, if you will, um, put against them. And in addition to that, as this started to go on, the AG's office got involved. And here, the, the AG's office was told by a former attorney general, uh, assistant attorney general, who said to them, said to the, uh, the attorney general, look, you have a criminal, there's criminal activity going on. And this was br subsequently brought out in other uh, depositions. And the AG's office simply said, oh, okay, we're going to mention it to the FBI. And they Is brought that, it to the it, FBI, it, it, and yes. the FBI uh, basically did and whatever they did. which was well, the AG there were a couple, when they were talking to the well, FBI? Well, Senator Ayotte was involved. Uh, Excuse me, it was then she was Attorney General. Attorney AI. General. Correct. Let's make things perfectly clear. She was Attorney General, um, the former Attorney General. Delaney was involved. Um, you know, and they all say the, it didn't reach to them. Oh, and, by, and by the way, I asked uh, Attorney General Ayotte if she knew about uh, FRM, and she said no. I asked the Assistant Attorney General, and he said no. It then became the that, Attorney that General. Was, uh, uh, Mike Delaney. Mike, Mike Delaney, Delaney. and it later right. became was appointed by Governor Lynch to be a correct. General. So now we find out. But he was that originally appointed by Governor Benson. Right. Right. But then right. we this find out thing. that they were right. talking. They're both inept. <laughs> somebody in their office was talking to the FBI. So they said they didn't know. So yeah, let's can, <clears throat> kind of fast forward to what is going to concern me and I think another number of representatives mm -hmm. as we listen to this, um, and maybe s some of the viewers of this. Government makes mistakes, um, and it harms people when it makes those mistakes. Let's just assume that is the case. It, it doesn't answer a, a, a police call quickly enough, and someone is harmed as a mm -hmm. result. Um, it doesn't um, that a financial operation as quickly as it might and investors lose money. Lenders. And so, uh, and so lenders. Lenders are... We're well, lenders. there's a difference. Lenders, lenders or investors. Investors no. are somebody who like investing in the stock market. And, and so there, there is this principle in t law that, first of all, says there's sovereign immunity. And, and the sovereign immunity arises out of old English common law, which says you can't mm -hmm. sue the king in the king's courts. The right. king doesn't set it up. And the reason that persisted over centuries is because they realized that in the end, if you have judges or legislatures giving away funds to those who think that they're injured, you're going to have uh, a, a, a system of favoritism. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm no, sorry no, you so, would say so, that because so what, it's not necessarily so what trying, true because well, so the AG what, just settled for $75,000 on a case being sued by the uh, individuals for miss, um, they let a prisoner go who shouldn't have been paroled. And they were sued. So, so and, okay, a couple of things. And and let me ask you two questions. And so then, there is precedent. And we can return to both sure. of them. One is, what is the defining principle here that says your folks who were harmed by a failure mm -hmm. of government should get reimbursed and some should not? Because we can't re reimburse everyone yeah. who's who's harmed well, by government action or inaction. Okay, okay. And, but, but, but what's the defining principle? Where, well, where, okay. where, accountability where, is one of them. But well, accountability. But, 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 the government but, but, should be but, held accountable. But, I mean, but, you of all people sh would believe that, holding I, people accountable. I, I, I certainly think that people ought to be held accountable, 
and I think in the, an election, government ought to be held accountable. Well, people what we're talking about is specific financial redress. But there's and not been one person that's been held accountable in government who's been involved in this. Well, that, that's different. I well, mean, that's so, what you so, say, people. So, and let, me, let me turn. I said there's going to be two. The second okay. thing is you said, well, somebody sued government and got 75000 Yep. Why, why don't they just sue? Because there's no duty of care. Well, isn't that the difference? There must have been a duty of care. No, the because the state um, doesn't have a duty of care when duty of care uh, accounts when, is, is for that, example, a prisoner. The state has an obligation to take care of that. Okay, because so, they so, did so, try. So that, that, is, that, that is the point I was trying to reach. They, is, they is cannot sue the where state. Where sovereign immunity has been abrogated is um, case law and, and statutes that says if the state has a specific duty of care, in other words, we imprison someone mm -hmm. who's dangerous. We take on the obligation of keeping that person isolated. How about from, outright lying? How about I, I, I understand but, but, it. No, that's you're very, you're, that's you're very, talking about wrongdoing, not duty. It, 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 and what we're talking well, about is the what banking is the duty commissioner of care? was investing in this. But, but see, well, his see, can, can't you see so. where this goes? Though, mm -hmm. Ken? If, if you say there's a duty of care on the part of the banking commissioner to pick up fraud and reimburse any investor for not doing it then one of the choices government will make, which is probably a bad choice, is to withdraw from doing anything. Because otherwise, you know, you're going to be well, held liable way, to way, do first, it First of all, are you for or are you not for these people who the Attorney General did not do her job, the Banking Commissioner not only got fired sort of, or retired over this, but his brothers invested into the company. He said he didn't know anything. See, the see, day what, it was what, closed down, they went up and took the computers away. Mm -hmm. The next day they bring the computers back. How much do we need of government being bad before we turn and say, guess what? I agree with Mr. O'Brien, but maybe this is one of the reasons why There the are people, many of us, and I, I think of myself as one of those people that legislate based on principles, not emotions. And, well, and if it's just principle. emotion alone, then I would say these people have lost a lot of money. One of them had a heart attack. And, and you want to do everything you can for them. But if, if it's a principle, then that's the, we ask ourselves what the question I asked. Victims. What is the defining principle? We've heard we, we've in had, court um, it is whether there's a duty of care. And, and therefore, these individuals well, can't, couldn't can't, go to court exactly. and prove a duty of care. But my, my point is this in regards to this specific bill is um, very tightly uh, tailored. We're to talking this. about a bill now. Yes, we are. And so who because because the there's no recognizable legal duty without legislation. We have to now we, we have enact to, a new and, law. You know, and, and, and you of all people realize that being an attorney and. Um, but this but I is would only say, for these people. Uh, right, all and once. it's only a specific but, amount. But why of, not the next people that there isn't to do then they, will have, not then they will have to prove. They don't have to prove anything. It's they have to get a great million. lobbyist. No, that's <laughs> and not true. And they, ha and they have, to, they have to charge us all up that's emotionally. And then we give them some money. That's what I'm saying. What is it? I, I really don't want to legislate. And there's many of us that don't want to legislate based upon an emotional response. But we do that all the time. Wait a minute. Look at, what we is don't under, if you, yeah, excuse should, me for just should. a moment. <laughs> we don't legislate under emotion. My God, we created the biggest bureaucracy in this country's history based on emotion. That's right. That's it's right. all emotion. Well, Was that the United Nations? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the... Oh. <laughs> What I mean, what we have? Jumps I mean, this, over everything. This, I'm trying I mean, to figure out what it is. Uh, uh, the Homeland Security. That's the biggest bureaucracy, and well, that was I mean, don't, right don't, out, out of 9-11. Don't, don't People say, gave don't up say, a lot of I thought, you meant, I thought you meant the, the legislature. There's, 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 there's sure some not. of us that, um, if you cite the Homeland Security as a reason to do X, we're going to do Y. Well, I, I mean, just telling you. <laughs> that's, not, that's, not, that's, what, not, that's not persuasive to I know. To I'm telling you, people <laughs> legislate out of emotion all the time. I'm not saying they should do it automatically. This bill is not. An emo it's obviously near and dear to my heart because I've been in this. But, but you but have to. You know, government you needs to be held accountable. You, you said uh, two I, things. One, we legislate out of emotion. The other is government needs to be accountable. Let me address them separately because they are two separate things. One is... Just because we drive fast sometimes doesn't mean that we should always drive fast all the time. In other words, because we make a mistake in some instances, i.e., 
um, enact a, a Department of Homeland Security doesn't mean that thereafter we should, we should abandon any effort to legislate based on principle. And what I'm trying to do here is to say that we have to look at what the uh, uh, ultimate consequences of addressing these individuals are very sympathetic. I've met with them personally. Yeah, I know. I, 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 know. I, I know. They speak and, very highly of you. And, and, and I care very much about them. Um, and, and, and my heart goes out to the situation they're in, but my heart goes out to the victims of a lot of crimes. No, well, let's and, just and, stay and, with and, this because, yeah, because we, that's look, what they are. I know, Bill, but crime. we can go from you know from A to B to C. But that's what you have here. to do. You have to stay at one that, place. That's it's what it means to have a defining principle. Ken, but this is a principle is that, that you should be able to define the principle and Here's then look principle. at A, B, C, and you know, all the way down to the biggest at, principle and say this principle applies to them. Well, here's a you weren't looking for a principle, and if it's not, it's just it's based upon subjective. Wait, it's based me, on the fact that I like Rip a lot, let me, let me and ask I you know he question. cares, and I like those people. They come from, they live in the next town over from me. A lot of them do. They're good okay, people. Me, I want to ask you. One, I want to ask you one question. But that doesn't mean we. How much harm? Okay, I, and I understand the principle. You can't. You, we can't take care of everyone. Uh, somebody else will come along. But how much harm? How much dishonesty does our government, meaning New Hampshire, have to do? before the government is responsible for the loss of from life to money. It, what what it, it has do to we ultimately, have to do? It have, has to ultimately um, first be determined to have a duty of care. In, in other words, it has to have owed a duty to someone you don't before, think it, before it can be held liable for the breach of that duty. And that's the defining principle. So somebody in the government lies to people who call or advocates their responsibility. Is it their duty to give them is it honesty? Cer certainly it, it may well be a good thing for that department to regulate and that means that certain individuals will carry out that function badly. If it, it's, it's bound to happen. How about three so, parts so of at government some, at some point making we have, mistakes? So at some point we have to say either in all instances, we're going to reimburse people who can show that kind of malfeasance, or in no instance should okay. we. Why does it always have to be black and white? Life it, is it, not, it's, it's, it's not, not it's, it's, it's no, it's I understand black and where, white. I understand, no, I understand, I understand your principle. Because, because when Ken gets about? hurt yeah. by, by some sort of Ponzi scheme, I, I don't want to make sure that Ken is a popular guy in order to get reimbursed. No. Either if, if these folks are going to, Ken should be able to give But the thing is, it and may every, not be every a fault scheme victim of, thereafter should. But there may not be a fault of the government who didn't do its job. And I think the government should be held accountable. Yes, yeah, so, and I mean, let, that let, is let the us, principle is accountability. Let us go back one step. Uh, we asked the then sitting Attorney General and the Assistant Attorney General if they knew what was taking place, and they both said, I mean, this was FRM, this was the big Ponzi scheme taking place. They both said no. Somebody in their office is talking to the FBI about it. Now, question, did they know or didn't they know? How many attorney, assistant attorney generals are there in New Hampshire? Not many. There's about 20 or 30, I think, if not yeah. more. And, and do you think that um, uh, 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 then Attorney General Ayotte and Assistant Attorney General Delaney would have known every conversation uh, or every investigation. Wait, with the, those the largest Ponzi scheme in, in, history. Uh, in the history of the state, and they don't know what's Ulti going on. Ultimately, well, first, I'm not sure it was the largest. Yes, probably. it is. I can but, tell but, you right but, now. But, yes, it is. But secondly, I mean, um, subsequently, found out about it. But before then, we didn't know. They they, they didn't go in that day and say. Yeah, I'm going to choose not to know about the largest Ponzi scheme going on in the state. So you're saying Rather, what happens things. is that certain things oh. come to their attention, and later on they're found to be of greater significance than at the point you're asking them, did they know really? So you're saying one of two things. Do, do you, Either... I mean, what you're suggesting is that they're lying to you. No, no. Oh, I, well, hold on a second. And, I'll and, tell and, you what. Kelly Ayotte is either lying or didn't know. I would rather oh, yeah. have her she have said, lied to me than not knowing her job because now she's that's a That's different than not knowing her job. Not knowing a fact is one thing. To say that because she didn't know that fact, she didn't know her job is, is really inappropriate, Ken. It, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't, I don't want to get into it, personal attacks on anybody. It, 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 doesn't, it, follow. Excuse me, it doesn't follow. Ken. Excuse me. And who wrote the report about this? 
was the attorney general's office. They, she didn't know about you're, what took place really in this is actually, you're, 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 That's actually you're, you're, Delaney. I have to Yeah, you're really conflating here, I mean, two different events. But, Later on, another attorney general wrote a report, which well, doesn't actually mean was that Delaney. These, the, no, the it was Delaney. And it was a head. It was head. Yeah, and right. we paid extra money to a Boston firm <laughs> who basically did whatever the attorney general wanted. But they, as I said during this uh, joint committee, and I subsequently have said it time and time again, they built everything on a, a argument, which was the foundation was built on quicksand. If you remove the fact that these were not investors, which they went down the road, they didn't give up an inch. They were constantly saying they were investors. Well, it turns out they were wrong. The federal bankruptcy judge said, no, they're not. They are lenders. So the fact is this. People were hurt. Government failed them. The job of government is to protect people. Um, I mean, uh, that's the, also, uh, that's the what, state of nature. If, 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 have, if that's true, why can't they go into court and establish a duty? Um, you know, I, they've been told that they... Have they sued? They, they, they've been told that they can't. Well, 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 but if they think it's so strong that there was a duty of care... They should go to court and try to prove it to a judge, I, rather than come in and seek special attention, uh, attention from us. Well, perhaps because, you can represent them. Well, no, probably, probably not. I have other things going on in my life. And, and <laughs> I'm not, and, 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 you you know. certainly do. <laughs> but but um, I, I guess that that is the defining principle. I want to. I think we all should want to treat similarly situated people the same with government when it comes to reimbursement uh, for any failures of government. And, and that's why we talk about a defining principle. And the defining principle can't just be that these people are like me. I understand what they did. You know, they, I've, met, I've met them. They, they're about my age. They're, they're, they're my background. Perfectly I can clear. understand. The defining principle is accountability, holding the state accountable for its actions. And, and, As so, and you so what are, you're saying, what you're saying is anyone who can make out a claim no, that's colorable, no, no. we pass some legislation saying, to okay. reimburse them. No, well, wait, I didn't say well, that well, no. Then what is the defining principle? Then, I keep on telling you. I'm going to say it one more time. It's accountability, holding but, the state accountable, much like but, you but you're asking, But you're asking us to be a judge and jury of whether or not the state needs to be held accountable. That's uh, what courts yeah. do. We that's, are state representatives. That's what, that's we what it are. knows. That's no, kind we, of what we, we do. We pass legislation. We don't judge disputes. We have a branch of government that judges disputes. There are many Excuse in our me. party We're that bringing would like to be. A law up. <laughs> We're bringing a no, we, something you, this is to very pay specific. these people back. No, we, we pass laws that say um, things globally. We say don't go more than 75 miles per hour on Route 93. It applies to New Hampshire, no matter who we are. don't cheat what people asking, for losing $30 what, million. No, what we're, no, and we do have a law that says don't cheat people. What we don't have... We just don't to this, choose to enforce no, it properly. No, no, no. Hold on, guys. <laughs> what we don't have is a law that says Rip Holden's client can go into the Treasury and take some money out of it. But we don't have that law yet. And, and um, that's the law we're being asked to, to, to uh, pass. Okay. And, and so that's, that's what it's called. You've heard the term. Special legislation. Okay. This is special education. It benefits one group. And, okay. And, no, and, we, we don't pass any special le legislation, mm -hmm. i.e., quip. Um, I know you're not from New Hampshire originally, but construction work in progress, we pass um, that's, the whole That's a, that's deregulation. a regulatory thing. That's, that's a regulatory thing. But we, 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 had a, we had a utility that went in bankrupt, but we and we said we better make sure that it's getting tailored, enough money that we can get electricity. We tailored for everybody. special legislation all the time. So the not, idea not, of no not, special not, legislation. First of all, you know, this, this idea that once uh, having once sinned, I should thereafter uh, be comfortable with sinning has no persuasion. Bill, Bill, hold on. But, but, but beyond beyond Glenn, that, you walk on but, water. But but <laughs> beyond that, um, what I'm saying is that we legislate mm -hmm. in order to do things for that affect everyone right, who are similarly right. situated. You're asking us to pass legislation that um, benefits one. Select a group of people, not anyone after them, not anyone well, before them. I will them. tell you this: and, is we and don't do, we do have done that. It's called civil rights. If, if you come, if you a, came, a if you came to us specifically for one group, to make sure that one group wasn't harmed. Can I, let me back up. Let me that's, back. That's, I mean, that's let, civil let me, rights. Let me but, back this up a little. No, but, but let, let us no, a no. It, it, that's that's not, us. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. We're basically that's saying a, anyone. If you're saying civil rights, group? it was it was mostly racial. We said 
people who are of African American background should be treated decently and, and with with the, the have the same Keep rights as everyone else. And, and that that wasn't a specific group of people. That was everyone who's similarly situated. What you're asking us to do is to say because this group can't prove in court a duty, we should as legislators, legislators, make a determination that they're right in a, in a certain dispute and give them some money. And, and I, I, I think that's an inappropriate thing for a legislature to do. Remember we had the petition okay, well, grievance hold on. process. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Bill, you can yeah. go on and, and, and on, and you do go on yeah. and on. I'm going to stop you for a second. On. I Fairness. agree with you, 90% of it. But the problem we're talking about is the people from security quit. The attorney general got out of there as quick as she could. The banking not, commissioner. I got to stop you right there. She okay, can, the she, banking she's commissioner. She's provided honorable service to the state. Well, Both I'm not denying that. And, I'm not and, denying and that. She didn't get out of anywhere okay. as quickly. As, yeah. And the banking commissioner basically left under a cloud of suspicion. A cloud. So this, we're not talking about one little thing. We're talking about the entire government not fold, uh, fold, folding up and, and, and not and doing so, its so job completely. What, and so uh, the point I was going to try to mm -hmm. get to here. Yeah was what I used to tell those folks that were involved in that petition of grievance committee that we had, um, who would come in with specific wrongdoing for specific individuals. And I said, what we don't do well as, as a legislature is try to judge a dispute. What we do well is to say that evidence indicates a failure of government. Let's correct that failure going forward. And so if, in fact, we have an attorney general's office, for example, that doesn't respond well to um, investor fraud, or if we have um, uh, government agencies that don't work well together, let's use this as an opportunity to find out and, and how your, to make it work well answer, going forward answer, so that there aren't any more of these groups. But you know, your you know how you was, do that? You, but you, you, fairness, you pay off the people who the government did not do its job. But no, you, no, that okay. doesn't do anything because the laws but remain in effect if I may, and the opportunity still exists to, for us to make that mistake. In your future. answer to that was to create more bureaucracy. We I'm not know. sure it isn't. It could be there's too we much. Well, no, it could now, be there's too much bureaucracy. But maybe, now, maybe we get rid of the you, commissioner of banking. With the budget that passed, I don't know. what? I don't know. You're saying my the, my response is to create more um, well, bureaucracy. No. That assumes the, the, what the response would be. Well, the, what the I'm trying to say budget, is that you look at it and say what isn't working. But but the current budgets now has a fraud squad, which is coming out of mortgage settlement money. Which is how ironic is that? These people get screwed, and the AG gets another million and a half dollars to set up this mortgage fraud squad, which in the past, they had a task force, of which the former AG was on, and did nothing. So because of what took place. Well, what you're telling me is that they came up with an ineffective solution. I mean, and maybe there's so no they, solution. They can't, so let's so see. we shouldn't do anything? So the government. Are, the, no, so no, the no. I mean, I, you're two different things. You know, you're saying that the only thing we can do is to pay off your clients. That doesn't take you, that no. doesn't address no, at not, all what the problem is, a government that. failure. And then you cite an ineffective uh, uh, way to address that government, government I, failure. I'm just saying that right it, now, it, it could the be government's. Way of handling it is to create another and that's what happened. fraud squad. And because so it's it because very of typical. What I mean, I've, worked, I've, I've spent a career as a legislator trying to um, work against that kind of knee jerk response, yeah. which is, you know, if government has a problem, let's put another layer of bureaucracy. Yeah, in, and nobody wants more place. government. I, I don't want more government. No, he's, you know, believe I'm, me. He's, look, despite <laughs> what you may think, I am very, very much of a conservative, but I'm a traditional conservative. Um, you know, <clears throat> New Hampshire is very, we're a cheap state. As I once told um, Howard Baker, we're not a conservative state. We're a cheap state, and I'm proud of it, you know. And you, know what, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying <clears throat> that uh, a, a liberal in New Hampshire is a conservative every other place in the United <laughs> States. Because <laughs> that doesn't you, work you, with You uh, guys are all over the place. He's not a conservative. <laughs> <laughs> Liberals are a conservative. I, and I'm having difficulty. No, hopefully the viewers no, are Bill, no, no, Bill. If, hopefully we, the viewers if the two are of us can confuse you, <laughs> Well, hopefully the viewers I don't think so. Well, that's a good segue so. to uh, go into my favorite topic, you know, which is right to work. Oh, you know? that's right. Now, it wait wouldn't, a minute. Right wouldn't to be work? fair. Wait a minute. No, right? it would be because... Right you, you, to you, work. You, wait, didn't you... you? You have to talk to the workers over at... Oh, no, they're not going to be. We don't broadcast in, in North Carolina, so you can't talk to oh. all the workers of Storm Ruger who are going to be Oh, would to that be this, this article right here? 
Uh -oh. I figured you would say that. Mm -hmm. So I actually talked to the reporter. What you don't know it is, first of all, so, so, so now, <laughs> now you're going to say that the reporter didn't no. uh, report a correct. No, 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 I'm not saying that. Actually, he didn't write the headline either, by the way. Actually, what he did say what is... What do you have? What you just took out, we have watched people who are I'm listening. I'm sorry, this is, is an article, a uh, front page article from the union leader. Now, I'm from, live in uh, the Manchester area, so I get the union leader. Uh, Wednesday, July 10th. Ruger picks North Carolina for jobs, new jobs. Now, what people don't realize is that Storm Ruger wasn't going to expand in New Hampshire at all anyway. They don't, didn't have the facilities. The, the article says none of that. You're, just, you're on your own on this one. Oh, oh, really? You're on the your article own, okay? doesn't say any of this? No, because it no, doesn't say it, what, what it says is among the factors was that this isn't a right-to-work state. Uh, no, it said that the guy brought that up, but he also didn't. No, it said it among does the say, factors. I think no, we, a, it's, it a says, right to work for less state. You know, mate. Well, wait, wait, wait. Let me just say less, what, what, what it does say <laughs> is about the incentives <laughs> that what? they were given. The incentives. He said, can't talk about what specific incentives because yeah, the deal is. What were the incentives? Yeah. Correct. And trust me, come August. Uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm not going to trust you on this one. Well, I will no, trust you. By all means, is what, you can what, have it. You can read what, it. It's what right I read there. and what everybody knows, which is what you a number, read is the well, headline. Number of, number of factors, one of which is we're not a right to work state. If that be the case, why didn't they go to Arizona where they already have a plant? You know, you know, it, they went know, to another right hold, to work. Hold on, state. you know, it's, you know what's interesting sense. about that. What's interesting about the right to work, and you were for the bill. I'm a, completely. I believe in unions, etc. But a lot of businesses up here we don't really a, weren't complaining. And we don't have a lot of unions. They, they really weren't complaining and saying, no, no, no the, we the, don't the want unions. The businesses that would complain have already gone to right to work states. IKEA, when they were going to put a business in, said that we are going into a right to work state. We looked at New well, Hampshire. Well, they can do it. They, they would. Oh, well, no, they, they would never come to so New they, Hampshire. Of course they would. Of course, of course they would. Well, well, you, you want the middle of the what country, incentives? you want the edge of the country, or you want ports. They never come to New Hampshire. Okay, so let, let me stop in that, you know, one person at a time. So okay. let, me, let me go to Ken here. Okay. Um, one of the things that I do in my private uh, career is I work with European companies that are putting subsidiaries into the U.S. They love to be in the Boston area because there's a two-hour overlap in their business day um, between Europe and Boston. So to this idea that they want to go into the middle of the country, not at all. If you're in Sweden, you want to have a subsidiary in New York or Boston or, or down along the, the mid-Atlantic because there's an overlap in the business day. And they're not what coming going to do because it's not a right to work. What are you going to do if you're IKEA or BMW or other uh, Mercedes, other companies that have put plants in the U.S., you're going to go to a right to work state. They've all gone to right to work Wait, wait, wait. No. Before you know, let's talk about BMW or, or plants like that. Uh, when BMW comes to an area, what they need is they need companies to create the product basically to put the car together. Would you agree? Like Hendricks over in Milford. Well, makes, uh, makes sub assemblies for cars. Well, we have the infrastructure, here, but, but, but they're not coming. No, well, well we, hold we on a second. We don't but have the infrastructure. Will you take a, a million? Well, we, we certainly do. We have the Pettengill property, a thousand acres Are over you next me to that the. Uh, if GM uh, was going to come to New Hampshire, New Hampshire could support GM. For a plan? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why, why, why would I, you I think mean, that's not the I case? Would why would you respectfully think that's not disagree because. First of all, take a look at our roads. Is there roads. something in our genetic? Oh, no, I'm roads? talking about our uh, infrastructure. Our, 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 our roads are some, some of the, of the best in the country. That came up. That must have been fairly embarrassing for the big government folks that just want a bunch oh, of jobs. Apparently, they must have gone south of Manchester because go north, those roads are so begging. They, I mean, are. they are. We had some yeah. of the best in the country. You know, our the roads report are that good. Came out, the NCSL but, you know, report that came out. And I would say this is like any report. I would say, okay, who commissioned it? What did they look at? Things of that nature. But let's get down to a couple of things here. One of the things you always say, and I have to commend people who are for right to work. It's a great slogan. It is a wonderful slogan, you know, and... Uh, a wonderful the, 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 slogan. The, the, slogan. Yeah, yeah. it's a right, great slogan. One of the great right, things right about good work. slogans is that they are accurate. No, that's no. not true. It, it is. No. Where's the beef? No, no, no. You, you that, That's yeah, a great yeah, slogan. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
How about, uh, you know, well, happy days are here again. That's another great slogan. You know, happy those days are Those are all Democrat slogans. If you're trying to attack Where's Democrat the, slogans. No, I'm just happy giving Happy days you here again with Franklin Roosevelt. Where's yeah, the beach, Walter Mondale? Actually, so if you want to where's the beach, Walter Mondale? <laughs> that's what he said. I usually no. sneak things in. You snuck actually, this when he said, Walter like, where's the beef, Walter Mondale? I mean, it was oh, Burger King. Oh, geez, I like that. That's a good one. No, but remember you know, during the, what was, who was he talking about? Remember it was the debate against the debate, cause, cause uh, where's Reagan. the beef? Yeah. Remember the old lady would pull yeah. up and... Yeah, that's right. That's from right. Uh, Wendy's. 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 Right. Right. Wendy's. But yeah. where, where I'm getting yeah. at with all of this is that... It wasn't such you know, a great... You Walt did, 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 did I love this. Um, <laughs> you know, everybody says you've got to be forced to be in a union. Now, we both know that's not true. We do? Well, I think you just say that too. But we do. Bill, you know, you know, you know here what? You go. I've got you, the you, federal law. You, you know, I'm going to be prepared. You mean the way we're you know, you know, And let me just read it to you. He's trying a bunch of stuff out no, like no, no, that. No, no, no. Because this is. It's Title V. It's under the, where it says if you're the, uh, the exclusive representative of responsible for the collective bargaining agent, you have to represent them regardless of any kind of organizational membership. And that's, that's the law. This is federal law. The, 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 you know, I'm looking at this, yeah. Rip, and i got to tell you something. As a lawyer, I look at this and it says, if you begin an exclusive representation, then you have to be an exclusive representative. You are granted it, it's subject the, to the laws of the state. And that, the state no, this is federal, Taft, and you know what? No, this, it's the, a Taft-Hartley Act, which I know, is the Taft-Hartley Act says you, you can, can have right to work of course in your it state. Does. And it, therefore, it, it overrides the, It certainly but it does. Doesn't, it certainly does. It's in the private sector, what you're doing is you're telling somebody you're going to give somebody something for nothing. And I know... No, we're and, not at all. Really? There's people that just want to go to work but they and get not have to pay union bosses. But they have to be, who, who, they don't they have pay to be represented. Union bosses. So no, they, ha they don't have yes, to be they represented. Do. The Taft-Hartley yes, Act That's overrides a, that. This, this, isn't, this came out of okay, hold, taft hold, hold, hold on a second. Are you saying that unions have not been good for this country? I'm saying unions have outlived what they did back in the days of, of rampant, uncontrolled capitalism. There was a time, certainly, when Sinclair Lewis was writing about um, the meat industry out in Chicago, for example, where unions had a positive role. That long teachers' since, unions should be teachers' abolished. unions are, be are, are teachers' unions are one of the most deleterious things that ever happened to public education. I used to negotiate with the teachers' union in my town. And you want to know what happened? When we'd get into, we had annual negotiations that that say two things right up. One is this has to be confidential, and we're told by our attorney it did have to be confidential. The second thing is that these senior union members would come in and sell their younger members down the river. We would be sitting there saying, you want to know what we want to do is we want to give some more money to the to the uh, uh, teachers who have only been there a year or two or three because we want to pay them more. And they'd say, no, we want retirement bonuses. Um, we want money to, to go to time off after so many years. And and they, it was a terrible thing. They drove so you, young, so you, good teachers out of my school district. That's what unions did in, in Mount Vernon. That's what you believe? That's what I saw. Okay. All so, right. I would say so this is that we, not every union I, I, I is great, will, not, not and, every union is And bad. I know a lady who, we're talking about the teacher's, uh, you know, Bill of Rights or, or, you know, protection bill. How I got involved with that was that was from a lady who was teaching. In turn, she sent a student down to the office. They sent the student back with an F-U. Uh, you keep them. Exactly send the student back out, fight breaks out in the classroom. All of a sudden, she gets fired. She gets fired because she can't control her classroom. All right. well, well, the, union, this, this... the union steps in and says, well, wait a minute. Well, this is happening all the time. We all know that, 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 that stuff like this is happening all the time. And it was because of the union, this lady uh, uh, kept her, let's say, her credentials. She later retired, she didn't have a black mark against her, and the school that she came from, because of the union, had straightened that out. But it cost somebody their job. So when you say, you know teachers who've lost we, we, their job, I know we, a teacher have, who lost her job. And, and I know a teacher who, in my district, uh, was a, a man of about 35, 40 years old, 
who backhanded a kid. Yep. And because of the union, we had to pay $50,000 in order to get that man away from his students. You know, so there's anecdotes all over the place, Ken. Um, what I'm saying is that we whoa, try... Whoa, we, whoa, 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 whoa. You, so that, you know, you, you, you hit, say one he story. He hit a child, you, backhanded. Okay, hold on. You, a, a, you a say, fifth grader. you've got one story. How many did the, I hear the, from you? The, 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 what we're being told by unions, teachers, and administration. This is going on all the time. And what I'm being told is that it's going on all the time because I told that story to somebody in Goffstown, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact, a couple of week weeks ago, actually last week, and, and they talked about similar situations. They had a child being abused by a teacher, oh. and, and the yeah. person is currently on the Goffstown board, and they had to in this off. day and age, and you, you they, know, had, to, they that had to pay off. Being sued and they had to pay off the employee in well, order to get them to go. Hold on a second. So there's, if, there's, if, stories, there's a, stories all over the place. Think what, what, I, what, I know is what, I, what I know is, what, is that when we tried to put together fair compensation for teachers, we, we had ran right into the buzzsaw of union representation, which didn't care about younger, newer members of the union, but cared about the, the vested union bosses. Well, let me ask you something. You and know, then, and let's, I, then let's move on to another yeah. subject because... You know, uh, in, in regards to this, and for the record, I'm not a union member. I, I actually was you a know, union member. I'm not, past, I never surprising. have been. But, I have been. Um, you know, I, I, not every union is perfect. No, you know, and some I, I some agree employers are good, yeah. some employers are bad. That's correct. But I think that we can uh, say, you know, ironically, the bill that you introduced, whether you realize this or not, is the same bill that was introduced in 1975. Same exact language. Which oh, a couple was? of choice. Which was right to work. The, okay. It was the same exact word. So you're saying basically, oh, okay, New Hampshire hasn't evolved in over 30 years, and that. You, you, you're probably going to say, well, it's a principal thing. And I, I admire I, I, your principles. We I, disagree, I but I, I don't I can... know how having a, a bill that you're trying for a number of years to get passed well, means that New Hampshire hasn't evolved. Well, wait, wait, well, wait, 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 wait. The progress would be to get rid of right to work, if that's what you're talking about, evolution. Well, you're, you're, and these, the, we, 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 I can we say get you get rid of right I, to work, I, and luckily I, New Hampshire's I, never had right to work. Actually, that's wrong. We were a right to work state. And it didn't work then. You know, we, we should get rid of forced unionization, obviously. You can't be forced to you join can. a union. You can. Really? You, you can't You're be a state a employee in New Hampshire unless you pay money to union bosses. Cannot do union it. Union bosses? Who are these union bosses? The, you know, the, the people running the union. You can't So my be, employer so, is a union boss? No, your employer, I don't, I don't know who the, your employer the guy, is. My, the, my I don't client. I who you work for. The you're, teachers. You're, I paid by them. Absolutely. So my guy who grew absolutely. up in the projects of Dover is a, is a union boss. Absolutely. If he's, if he's running a union, he's a okay. union boss. And As that's opposed what they to care. a fat cat so corporate. You, I mean, you, that's, that's you, sa you said that. Ridiculous. You said that no one can be forced to pay into a union. I didn't you say can, that. You I cannot, said you cannot be you forced. You cannot have an, be an employee of the state in New Hampshire unless you pay Money to union bosses so that they that's can go not true. elect that is not true. officials to negotiate. You know that's not true. That no. absolutely is. You that can get away from I think maybe you've that's stepped a little over the line. No, I that's don't, not, absolutely no. true. I'll tell you what. You, what, have, to, what, you have to pay, what, what do you call it, association fees no, or something like it, that? No. Whatever you, the euphemism you've come up with. Okay, it, you as have to give to, money to why union it, bosses okay, in order to be a state employee. Explain this one thing to me and then we'll move on. Why is it okay when government does it, or not government, when private industry does it? Does what? Charges you a fee for what? to use their product. Um, you want it free? No, no, no. Are I'm talking about something that is imposed upon them that they are legally, by the government, forced to do. I, I, I don't follow you. Okay, here's an example. Right. My cell phone bill. Yeah. Okay, I have a surcharge, and it says on that, these are to cover um, certain government regulations and taxes. Okay. When they do it, or when... I, my electricity, for years, I have to, if I'm dealing with PSNH. Are you saying you have to pay taxes? No, I have to pay taxes on that anyway. But there's also a little asterisk. Do yeah. you use Verizon by any chance? There's a, you know, what do they call it, the user fee, UFTA or something like that? You no, no, it's different. It doesn't go into what the taxes and uh, charges are. It's a little asterisk. So who ends small... up with this money, government or the company? It's the company. They're well, using it. I guess if you don't want you don't want to use their product, don't, okay. don't use their product. What about this? 
for years, I had to pay public service a, uh, a recouping fee. Right. Because they were mismanaged and they mismanaged their own. What would, and you, now ra I what would you rather do, be without electricity? Because that's your choice. You could just um, not buy okay. any electricity or you could watch it if, go out of business. If that be the case, then... Are you, are you, are you, are you saying government's going to go out of business and we want to pay union bosses some money? What I am saying, saying, I, I, I saying the is the that analogy. there's a there's a direct analogy, and the correlation is is that when cor uh, private industry does it and corporations does it, that's okay. But when no, you're a, buying a, a private service. Interest, you're buying a service. You're not buying a service here. They're forced to. No, no, we don't. Law. You, you, want to, you want to have them we pass to. right to work legislation in, in the state private sector, in state after not state, in the private sector. Union members walk away. They don't but, pay anymore. But you That's still your, have to represent your, them by you, law. You federal, don't have to. You in don't federal have law, to. yes, you do, Bill. No, and you I'm don't. surprised that you would say no. that. I'm having fun. You, you <laughs> should know fun. this. I mean, it's no. a federal law, and it's in the private sector. It's obviously not true. It's, it's not. Thing, true. No. All right, I got no. one. Okay, let, let, let's go, it, let's mean, go to one saying, more subject. You're let's saying there never can be a right to work state because no. of federal law, I'm and everyone knows that, that the only reason we can have right to work is because the Taft Hartley I'm, allows and these states to. I know that, too. but Taft Hartley also, if you look at the uh, the actual congressional transcripts, which I have done, they do talk about the quote free rider issue, and Bob Taft acknowledges it, but he says we're going to deal with it later. No, he doesn't say anything now. He's hey, how around. about the Liquor Commission here in the state of New Hampshire? Ah, another pet peeve well, I mean, of mine. Yeah. You... You guys agree. You, uh, no, don't no look actually, look we, don't we don't okay, agree. We don't agree. Well, look at me. I'm actually... I, you I'm know, trying to get us out of this. I'll be honest with you. He's been that. pretty quiet when you're going after me, oh. so whatever, I'm going to help him out. Oh. You know, <laughs> oh, yes, you I are. Actually, I you're actually, the one who put me on the board. <laughs> I actually had legislation on that, on saying that we should have oversight. You know, you know what struck me? I talked very laudatorily about... Um, Lobbyists, and there's I can't remember the guy's name, Corson. Yeah, Corson. Clark. Clark. Clark Corson. Yeah. And so I, I'm Speaker of the House, and I can't remember. There was something I did to before this whole issue came up of uh, the Liquor Commission. I can't remember exactly what it was. I got this letter. I had never heard of the guy before. You've never heard of Clark I, Corson? He's no, been there. I heard of him once he sent the letter over. He sent this <laughs> letter over, and it was the most vile um, letter that I'm, I'm sitting there going, you know, this guy doesn't know me, I don't know him. Why would you ever write to a government official saying these things like, yeah, you're yeah. awful and, and, you know, your wife should leave you and not specifically yeah, that. Yeah, but that, my wife but that, will that, that, that sort I of mean, stuff. We, that, that, we may that, disagree, but yeah, I was never but, but, personal. And I yeah, but all this personal respect. stuff. And I yeah, think no, that's myself, not right. I, you know, that, that's more, than anything, else, minutes, that more so. than anything else that concerned me about the Liquor Commission, that they would be associated with a person who would conduct himself mm -hmm. that way. Well, I'm not defending the Liquor Commission, by the way. I agree with you. And yeah, I think you're and, right. And by the way, you're the one who set up the to study the liquor commission. Uh, you did put me on it. All right. So, but and in you, fairness, you a long time ago tried to pass a bill two for bills. oversight. Two bills on oversight, which so we both voted all against. Can probably end on that one. Rip, look into the camera and <laughs> tell people how they can get in touch with you. Well, you can always um, always give me a call. Like, and I'm in the on the uh, state, Secretary of State's website. Um, uh, you have a cell phone number you want to give to him? Yeah, it's 660-0400, um, by uh, all means. Are, um, do you have a website or? I don't, but are you, on uh, Facebook? you know, I am. Uh, all right, so they Somebody can... can always get a hold of me, by all means. Uh, and as I said early on in this, whether we agree on one issue, hopefully we're going to agree on something. And no matter what we do, we will always disagree respectfully. We may jab each other right now well, and be upset. Uh, but when I, it's I'd, rather, I'd rather fight a little. Okay, uh, Mr. O'Brien. Well, I'm, uh, you can locate me at um, the O'Brien for Congress committee, hiding out from the union bosses there. I'm going to be. That's right. Well, we okay. look forward to that. <laughs> All right. Gonna, uh, so your, your website is? O'BrienforCongress.com. Okay. And uh, your email address is O'BrienforCongress at Gmail. And uh, you can give me a call as well. You're on Facebook? I'm on Facebook, yeah. Okay, well, uh, we, we sort of have an agreement here, and it, it is that if he mentions you're running for Congress, I must say that uh, I am for Annie Custer, and I will support Annie Custer, and you will be running against Annie Custer. So that's fair because... I'm still working on you. And we, I know, we still want Annie Custer <laughs> to come in and sit down. Uh, you can also get me on Gidge World, which is an art website. Believe it or not, I'm an artist. 
uh, or you can get me at kgidge at aol.com uh, or telephone number 603-864-9332. Uh, thank you very much for oh, coming. It was my really. pleasure. Thank you very really. much. Yeah. Yeah. It's you. always no, good, it's to, it's see good to see you. Yeah. yeah, it really was. Yeah. See you next time. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.